welcome to our webinar on satellite communication as an effective PSTN replacement. I'm Liz Wilson, I'm the Marketing Director for Ground Control, and I'll be your host for this short and hopefully informative presentation. After a brief introduction to Ground Control, we'll take a look at the challenge presented by the PSTN switch off, particularly the impact upon utilities companies. There are no prizes for guessing that we're going to propose satellite as a viable solution to these challenges, but we will be exploring some of the options available. And finally, we'll address some of the frequently asked questions about this service. So ground control has been around since 2002 and is perhaps best known in North America, where it was one of the first manufacturers to bring an auto pointing satellite antenna to market. Hot on its heels was Wireless Innovation, which was founded in the UK in 2004 and specialised in what was then known as M2N, uh, satellite connectivity, and now more commonly referred to as IoT or the Internet of Things. Rock 7 came a year later in 2005 and brought tracking devices to a huge audience. Uh, you may have come across the Rock Block and Rockstar devices, for example. Wireless Innovation purchased both Ground Control and Rock 7, and very recently, in August 2021, we came together as one brand, Ground Control. It's a super rich legacy that we're very proud of. It's not why you're here, so we'll continue at pace. I would imagine that most people listening to this are very aware of the PSTN problem or challenge, if you prefer more motivational language. In short, utilities companies are particularly exposed by BT Openreach's decision to switch off the PTS, uh, PSTN network, which many thousands of many sites are currently connected using this technology. Uh, and it has worked really well. That astonishing availability is something that even FTTP may struggle to match. Security is another concern, uh, as many utilities companies are requesting more and more data to facilitate the smart grid. If that data can be intercepted, that could lead to costly and reputation damaging out outages. Instead, cellular connectivity will be the solutions for will be the solution for most utility sites, but not all. Very remote sites may have no cellular coverage because they're in a valley, for example, and you, and you can't simply move that site into three or four G cellular range. Or, and this is pretty common, you may have some cellular coverage, but it's unreliable. So a backup or failover system is needed to ensure that this data can always get out. So what would we propose? Connectivity has long been the failover for really remote utility sites where not even the PSTN network reaches. Because you need very limited infrastructure, indeed all you need is a clear view of the sky, and an antenna plus receiver that can connect with the satellite network. These devices are not weather or location dependent. Uh, they have a 10 to 15 year lifespan and they have been built with your existing infrastructure in mind. The key here is resilience. When the lower cost cellular network is unavailable or unreliable, satellite provides an excellent primary or failover system. So what we've done on this slide is broken out satellite communication into three sections. The top of the pyramid refers to very small packets of information, the location of something, the temperature of something, data boys in the ocean, for example, measuring currents. The bottom of the pyramid are your full on one to four and a half meter fixed location satellite dishes, which are constantly pinging data back and forwards between sites using the geo geostationary satellite network. But the sweet spot for PSTN is the middle section. This will send your data at regular intervals or potentially just alarm on exception. And we're gonna look at two devices that sit in this space more closely to see how they compare. The BGAN M2M device is power, uh, devices, I should say, are powered by Inmarsat, which operates geostationary satellites. And these are orbiting a good distance from the earth and they don't move their position in relation to the earth. So once you've pointed your satellite dish at an Inmarsat satellite, that's a very stable connection. This, what we can see on the screen here, is an IP solution, low power, directional small terminal. This particular one is on a hydroelectric scheme, uh, monitoring the river levels. The data logger is collecting rainfall data, temperature, humidity and water level. It's got a bit of intelligence built in, so it can alarm on exception, or it can increase sampling based on trigger levels on the level sensors. 
Generally, it's collecting data every 15 minutes, and it's powering up the beacon to send that data every hour or on alarm. It's solar powered, it has a 12 volt battery, and the data is coming off an IP connection and going to an FTP site where it's picked up. The image here shows the solar panel rain gauge in the terminal, and the bottom picture shows a, a limitation of this particular setup. The terminal has been mounted on a pole away from the building, as you can see, simply because we couldn't mount it on the building as the tree uh, in its autumn foliage was blocking the connection to the satellite. It works brilliantly, uh, but it would have been great to have been able to place the terminal on the building. And another small drawback of this particular device is that both the transceiver and the antenna are combined in the same unit. And that's, that's a relatively expensive asset to have, um, to have sitting outside in a prominent position. Although to be fair, given the remote location of these sites, vandalism is extremely rare. One thing to note is that incredible availability, which is comparable to PSTM. And also of note is that this device in this example, which is the Cobham 540 Explorer, it allows you to use cellular when available and satellite when not. So you can manage your costs more effectively and potentially as little as 5% of, um, of your data is gonna go over satellite here. So the ROT remote was designed uh, partially uh, and, and actually it was pretty much top of mind for a lot of the development with the PSTM problem in mind. ROT Remote uses the Iridium Low Earth Orbit Network. It's very different to the geostationary network in the respect that there are 66 satellites and they're moving about constantly above the Earth. And because they're closer to the Earth, the latency is lower. And you get the added benefit of not having to point your antenna in a particular direction. For legacy setups, the ROT Remote has serial RS-232 and 485 ports, so we can plug instruments straight into the device, or we can use the IP connection. It's low powered, like the BGAN, and so solar power will keep it going, and away, and again, sorry, it offers two-way communication. It's easier to install, uh, because you don't need to find a specific angle to talk to the satellite. Uh, the multi-directional antenna makes this easier, faster, and a little more robust. You know, neither wind nor wildlife uh, will put that antenna out of um, out of connectivity with its satellite network. Here's a close up of the ROT remote transceiver uh, and the wide variety of ports at the front, as you can see. One thing to note here is that this device actually sits inside the building so that the more costly part of this setup is protected. Uh, the ROT remote in general is more discreet and therefore more secure in that respect. The ROT remote has some edge processing, co uh, edge computing capabilities. This is super important because sending data over satellite connection is more expensive than cellular. So being able to do some computations on site and only send that critical data over the satellite connection is going to really help bring your costs down. To be really good at minimizing your data costs, which isn't only important for reducing the amount of airtime you need, but also the amount of power your device physically needs, MQTT has been built into the ROT remote, which allows you to use the system with different protocols. And this, the aim is, will also future-proof your device well into the future. So on to the frequently asked questions. Which device has the lower latency? So the ROC remote, it, as it leverages low Earth orbit satellites, which are powered by Iridium, has a latency of less than one second. BGAN is a little slower because the satellites are in higher orbit, geostationary, um, but at less than two seconds, it's still suitable for PSTN replacement applications. Power is needed to operate the devices. Both devices are capable of working on solar and small battery. Uh, for example, the BGAN uh, photographed earlier operated for three months on a 48 amp battery without any solar recharge, and that was transmitting data hourly. How secure are the devices? So the data is very secure and it's in the satellite network. It then lands at a ground station and it's back hauled to your base of operations. And this can either be an interconnect or a VPN, depending on your needs. It has to be said that this has been a key factor in the build, particularly of the Rock Remote. We know it's a really key requirement of utilities operators. And the sort of million dollar question, how much does it cost? <laughs> um, satellite has always been seen as prohibitive because it's very expensive. And it was expensive when there was no alternative to satellite. But now we're effectively competing with the cellular network and this resilience is absolutely critical. It's not as low cost as cellular. 
And so one of the areas ground control helps is to bring your data volumes down. Do you need all the data or do you just need the exceptions? Can the logger on site speed up or slow down, for example? Uh, can you have sampling rates based on how important the data is, et cetera? Roughly, the cost is around five pounds per megabyte. To put this into context, if you were sending six megabytes per month via cellular, we'd aim to bring that down to around two megabytes per month via satellite. And that's if satellite was your primary connectivity source. If you use satellite five to 15% of the time, you can see how the cost will end up being extremely manageable. And finally, how easy is it to install these devices and are they interoperable with your current setup? Both the Beagan and the Rock Remote have been designed with self-installation in mind. Uh, the Beagan gives you audible and flashing LEDs to help you point the antenna in the right direction. And once installed, it has an RJ45 connector and can be powered over Ethernet. So it's very simple wiring and you're also guided the whole way through by a graphical user in interface. It's pretty much the same for the Rot Remote, but even simpler, as you don't need to point the antenna in a particular direction, you just need to expose it to the sky rather than have a specific direction. Finally, we've provided this at a glance view of the sort of devices you could use to facilitate the PSTM re replacement. I'm not gonna dwell on this as there's a lot of detail to take in, uh, but the key takeaway point here is that you are invited and encouraged to talk to the ground control team about this. We are here to give you objective and very experienced device, uh, advice on the best solution for your specific situation. I hope you found this useful. You can find out a whole heap more at groundcontrol.com and you'll find all of our contact information there too. And many thanks for your time.